We've got quarterbacks on the rise in Kyle Krabs latest 2025 NFL mock draft. We're breaking that down for you today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are locked on NFL scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Joe. Um... Somebody in the Panthers organization listens to Locked on NFL Scouting, apparently. Because we had the conversation yesterday. I know a lot of people had the conversation yesterday. Uh, but the news dropped. A number one overall pick at quarterback has been benched. And coincidentally, to tie it into our content today, uh, I have said team drafting a quarterback in the first round of my latest 2025 NFL mock draft for the 30 13. You know, it's, it's like a very complicated deal. On one hand, you look at Carolina and you're mindful of everything that they have invested in Bryce Young, not just the trade up to get him. There's a lot there, but trading for Deontay Johnson and giving Robert Hunt a million, hundred million dollars and paying Damian Lewis all the money and drafting the skill players, trading into the first round for Xavier Leggett and Jatavion Sanders and then getting Jonathan Brooks. Like You've done so much here to try to create this environment for Bryce Young to be successful. But then ultimately, he's not a playable quarterback, and you've got 52 other players on that roster with a new coach that you've got a lot to figure out. You owe it to the rest of that football team and for Dave Canales to have his best chance to not lose the locker room within the first quarter of the season to play the quarterback that gives you a chance to function offensively, and it's a tough spot to be in. But I I feel like Carolina probably did the right thing here. Uh, I'm inclined to agree. Um, the difficult pill to swallow as a part of this is the uh, sunk cost, right? This is not just a player that you drafted number one overall, and everybody's seen all the graphics, and we're not going to sit here and throw all the dirt on Carolina today, but they traded quite a bit to go up to number one overall and draft Bryce Young, and within less than 20 games, he's been benched as the starting quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, and that is... Uh, a, a brutal development for you consider the long-term outlook of Carolina. I think the blessing for them is you probably look at some of the concessions that they made to get the offensive staff better, but you acknowledge the ceiling with Andy Dalton and you're really just trying to evaluate everybody's ability to execute your offense. So you know where to build from here. Right. Right. Um, they're not going to be a good football team. They're going to be in position to draft a quarterback early next year. You see what you can get from Bryce Young. Maybe you try to do that sooner rather than later. I don't know, but I certainly don't think there's a lot of pathways to rehabilitation for Bryce in Carolina. So um, if you can expedite that process, move on, and then just from Dave Canales' standpoint, say, I know you guys traded a whole bunch. I wasn't here for it, so let's make yeah. the best of what we got. And let's evaluate and let's get in position to to draft a player to run the offense moving forward. Even Dan Morgan, yeah, he's wasn't the general manager when that right. happens. And so I think that positions them well to to do that if that's the road that they want to go down. Um, and so getting into your latest edition of your 2025 NFL mock draft. Every other week. Every other week. Carolina other Panthers week. picking number two landing on quarterback Carson Beck out of Georgia. Mm-hmm. And so this is this is a player that we continue to see towards the top of mock drafts. Well, I want to get to the number one pick because that's really fascinating, but is there anything about Beck in particular that you like about him as an option for Carolina? Uh, you often see teams in many instances 
swing the pendulum the other way, right? Oh, we have a player's coach. Now we need a disciplinarian coach. Oh, mm -hmm. we couldn't do this. So now we're going to invest fully in doing this at maybe the expense of, of doing other things, uh, either scheme, scheme wise on offense or defense. Stylistically, I think the only parallels between Carson Beck and Bryce Young is that they both played for national championship programs in the SEC. Like, Carson Beck is prototypical size and stature. He hasn't had the best start this year for Georgia, um, but his full resume says this is a player that is very effective throwing over the middle of the field. And you consider Bryce Young, and he's not prototypical stature. And I a lot of his best stuff came outside because he could see that, and the ability to see the middle of the field was something that Bryce – at times really struggle with unless it was outside of structure. Carson Beck isn't really a whole lot of uh, flower. You don't give him a whole lot of flowers for what he does outside of structure versus Bryce Young. Even though he's capable of being an anticipatory thrower, he liked to work outside of structure at Alabama. So there's a lot of yin and yangs to these two players that as I sat down and I asked myself, okay, if Carolina is going to make an investment here, I think Beck has the arm to execute the, down the field element that you saw Canales work in Tampa with Baker, but he's got more of a prototypical build. He can kind of attack the middle of the field, which if you're going to be a play action heavy team, there's going to be opportunities for you to throw in the intermediate areas of the, of the field over the middle of the field. And um, you kind of go the other direction as far as like the, the physical skill sets of the player. That's the number two pick. The, the number one pick to me is really where this mock draft gets interesting right away and it's it's cam ward cam ward yeah. going number one overall to the new york giants and your draft order is set through your own projections of the rest of the season and so mm -hmm. giants edge out carolina for the top pick and cam ward's off to one hell of a start man over 300 yards and three touchdowns in all three of these games while completing 73 percent of his passes i mean the the physical skill set has always been through the roof the execution and how he's playing to start this year for Miami is off the charts so much so that you've mocked him number one overall yeah I I as you said and we've we've known Cam we met Cam a few years ago so he's been on our radar for a while um going from incarnate war to Washington State with a college spread and then going to Miami and playing for that program you kind of expected that it was going there was going to be a, a developmental leap that had to happen. And maybe it still does, but at least through the first three weeks, and that included a trip to Gainesville and, and playing in the swamp where he just absolutely blew the doors off of Florida. And I know they, they struggled offensively and uh, game scripts can be a thing that makes it difficult to kind of compartmentalize that. But all he has done is execute the offense at a high level. And for Cam, the original appeal for Cam was, wow, he's got a really dynamic arm, all the arm slots in the world. He's got really creative ball handling. He's not bothered by pressure. He's, he, he has the extend the, extend the play gene in him, even if he's not the most dynamic player. He's not just doing those things and living off of that at Miami. He's actually executing an offense at a high level and making the reads and the progressions and, and knowing where his players and his eligibles are at. So now you take that layer on top of what was already a fascinating athletic skill set at the position, and it's like, how do you not look at the start and how do you not say um, this has the makings of a player that we've seen leap up in draft stock and get drafted in the top five? Oh, he's he's positioning himself well, a player that I'm very excited to watch the rest of this season. We had a couple more quarterbacks go in the first round. Uh, we'll talk about that and some of our favorite fits on the other side of it. Folks, be sure to stick with us. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new role, but might be open to that new job. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't even visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 
post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Folks, the NFL season is obviously here. Basketball is right around the corner of the NHL. You want to get to these games, you've got to check out Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to purchase tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. The app is awesome, easy to navigate. They give you a seat view. They specialize in flash deals. They will uh, give you the all-in prices if you choose to turn that on, plus the last-minute ticket deals. Maybe you don't know if you're going to be able to get to a game two months from now or a concert in three months from now. Well, Game Time specializes in those last-minute tickets, so check it out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNFL. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. I want to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Um, Philadelphia lost to Atlanta. Kirk magic happened on prime prime time. Kirk happened to the Eagles um, game winning touchdown drive in the final minute and 40 seconds after Philadelphia um, had a third down. Atlanta was out of timeouts They're milking the clock and they throw the ball. Stops the clock with like a minute and forty seconds. Minute forty seconds left. Um, my question for you is: Did you mind the play call to throw on third down, knowing that it was open? It was a good play call. It was just a missed opportunity with either the throw or the catch from from Jalen Hurts to Saquon Barkley. And then, what would you have done on th- fourth down? So, knowing that if you kick a field goal, it's six points and still lose the game with a touchdown. Is is kind of the forgotten part of this. They tried to draw Atlanta offsides and Judon obliged and nobody moved for the Eagles. Like I feel like that's an over underrated talking point in the game. Like none of that had to happen if 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 the Eagles are paying attention in that moment and they move when Judon did he goes, break the plane though? Because I, I know close. It, it's close. It it's one thing to look at the um before the two minute warning when they intentionally went offsides and Philly declined that. So there's a lot of like really fun right. gamemanship going right. on in that end of game sequence for clock preservation standpoint. Um, I feel kind of obliged with, with the incomplete pass on third down, but I don't, I don't know that I, I felt like Judon was far enough back where I, I didn't think he necessarily broke the plane when he took his jab step in the first it, place. Nick Sirianni, who seemed pretty upset that nobody moved with him. I would say, the so move. I would say, I, right. Uh, the, your question was, do I take exception with um, the third down the call to throw and, it? and then kicking the field goal as compared to going for it on fourth down, knowing that a touchdown loses you the game either way if you kick field goal? Yeah, it feels like they were like in on their identity and then out on their identity, right? Nick Sirianni right. wants to be aggressive. It's like, okay, so we're going to throw the ball on, on third down, um, and then that didn't work, so we're going to kick the field goal, right? I, I, I think that's where I take exception is like either be aggressive or don't be aggressive do the boring thing and run the ball and milk the clock and do whatever you have to do there. If that's what you want to do, but don't, don't be half and half, like be aggressive or don't be aggressive. So I think that's where I take exception with it. Yeah. And and it, I think it would have been even more interesting if they ran the ball on third down and then still went for it on fourth down. And even if they didn't get the first down, because right. now, now you're out of timeouts, you're going to be under a minute left and you're pinned down inside the 15. Yeah. So, like, realistically, unless you're working the sidelines, how quickly can you get down the field into even a position to kick and get 60 yards down the field to just tie the game? So yeah, that, that's the fun stuff that happens with competitive games like the one that we got last night on, on Monday Night Football to close week two. Enjoyable football game. Uh, we have two more quarterbacks in the first round. Shadir Sanders to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. This feels like, I feel like this is like a a momentum thing. I'm seeing this a lot. A lot of logic between what you, I mean, you know that there's a lot of uh, preferences for Shadur and Dion and and where he's going to go. It feels like a a former player like Coach Pierce would probably be a spot. I I think it'd be a great fit for, Shadur would be a, a young coach like Antonio Pierce. 
right? Like, you know, you know, the traditional guard um, is probably going to bristle a little bit at Shadur because there's a lot of extra media attention and scrutiny that comes with Shadur Sanders. Right. And it, your traditionalists might not want to have to, to deal with all of that that comes with the the fanfare and the hoopla of of this high profile player and his dad's Dion and uh, I think Antonio Pierce w- would be one of the best coaches in the league to kind of bring him in and and make sure that, uh, that that's a good chemistry fit and as we've seen for other quarterbacks, um, chemistry and fit really matters and there's like I, I would hate Shadur in New York in the New York market. I and I did that. that with the first mock that I did. I, I was like, I, I gave the Giants Carson Beck instead of Shadur because, and this was before Cam Ward really took off like he did because all of the, the fanfare and hoopla and extra attention and scrutiny that Shadur gets in New York, that, that wouldn't that wouldn't fly well in that New York media market, I think. So a place like Las Vegas where the media is not necessarily crazy, but it is a bigger market. They're a, a traditional team with a lot of prestige um, and a player's coach in, in Antonio Pierce, who was recently at the college level. And I think is, is well equipped to uh, harness that. Well, I thought that was a good culture fit for Shadur. The last first round quarterback goes 15 overall to the dolphins. Garrett must Nussmeyer out of LSU, mm-hmm. uh, obviously in the aftermath of the latest to an injury, ugly injury and, uh, I know you did a, an entire episode on Locked On Dolphins, really weighing out the options for Miami, right? I yeah. think a lot of a lot of team, a lot of people look at this as you know, Tua has a choice to make. So does Miami, and, and looks like for this mock draft, you have them going with a replacement option. Yeah, uh, I think mock drafts, especially at this stage, are kind of exploratory and hypothetical of different scenarios. And and for Miami, you know, they are going to do the right thing and and allow Tua Tagovailoa to make a decision that he feels is best for him. But after that decision is made, and this is the spark notes of the show that I did yesterday, uh, after Tua makes his decision, if he decides he wants to continue to play, the Dolphins have a decision to make of their own. And the the way that they structured the contract and the out that avoids the 2026 fully guaranteed salary by March 14th kind of indicates that they, they wanted to be prepared for all fronts if something like this were to happen. Well, what happens if they, they decide to take it? Um, Nussmeyer at LSU, there, there's shifts and motions in that offense. I, I think he's a little bit more of a dynamic arm. He's a little bit more of a prototypical build. Um, I, I think the really intriguing part now that you know you knew there was risk when you signed the contract, but you you built yourself an out into it, and if you decide to take it, um, that dead cap will come off the books in 2020. By 2026, you'll be clear of that contract. That probably puts you in a good position to retain talents like Javon Holland and Jalen Phillips that you have to might otherwise make difficult decisions with on whether or not to retain. Uh, the dead cap for Miami, based on salary cap projections from the Tua contract, is probably going to be about 13% of the cap each of the next two years if they were to move on from the contract uh, for 2025 and 2026. So um, getting cheap quarterback play in the meantime mm-hmm. would then allow you it's not like you go out and sign Dak, right? Now it's like, okay, now we got to get rid of a bunch of other talent. We have a bunch of sunk costs and it's crazy expensive quarterback room. Uh, it would allow you to retain the rest of your talent and kind of restart that clock. remember watching uh, USC, LSU in week one and, and watching Nussmeyer and I sent you a text. I'm like, hey, is, this guy's a thing, right? And you're like, yeah, very, very much so. And so I'm excited to just watch Nussmeyer this year because the tests are coming, right? I mean, obviously just played South Carolina, but 17 point comeback against South Carolina. Big. uh, They get Oklahoma and Alabama and Texas A&M. So there's some fun games down the stretch here to see if LSU puts another quarterback into the first round of the NFL draft. All right. We spent a lot of times on on quarterbacks, maybe on the next mock draft. We won't do that, but uh, still want to get to some of our favorite fits risers and more so folks be sure to stick with us you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, america's number one sports book well we got a little something different for you now through september 22nd all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get a three-week free trial of nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv then with a youtube tv base plan you'll be able to watch every regular season sunday afternoon not a market game all that you need is a google account and a current form of payment and you can cancel at any time just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sportsbook. 
Kyle, I probably should have said this uh, probably 20 minutes ago when we started recording this, but we are working through your latest NFL mock draft that is available for everyone's reading pleasure on the 33rd team. Mm -hmm. And so there's a link in today's show notes. If you want to read the whole thing, there's every pick analysis on all the picks. Be sure to check it out because we're only hitting some of our more interesting things. The content is uh, still available in full in today's show notes. So Kyle Krabs, let's move away from quarterbacks and start to talk about some of the favorite fits stock up. And there's a player in particular that I wanted to ask you about. Uh, and it's this ca- this uh, cornerback from East Carolina, Siobhan Revel, going to the Jaguars. And so small school corner mocking in the first round early in the season. We got a Quinion Mitchell type here. You know, you don't, you don't see this type of stuff, but it's it's been a thing, right? Sauce Gardner, Cincinnati, Quinion Mitchell, Toledo. Is this mm-hmm. guy the next one? Uh, probably. And he's, uh, I believe Dame Brugler has been the one who has led the charge coming into the season. I believe he was in Dane's top 50, top 30 mm. at the start of the season. Uh, this is six foot three, 195 pound corner with all the length in the world. Uh, when he played in high school, he was a two way player who also did track and field. Uh, he's been clocked in the four fours and the 40 yard dash. He's got an 11 foot standing broad jump at one of the, the summer testing. So, explosiveness, length, speed, the ball skills. He just had a 50-plus yard pick six uh, in in this most recent game that East Carolina played. And uh, have him going to Jacksonville to pair with Tyson Campbell, who they gave a new contract to. Uh, The other corner right there is is, um, Ronald Darby with Montaric Brown from a seventh-round pick from Arkansas, kind of in as Tyson Campbell goes to IR. And you just know we've talked about Jacksonville the last couple of weeks and the construction of the defensive side of the ball for them and the prototypes that they have pursued. And this feels like that. And uh, if you were going to tell me that somebody was going to take uh, revel in the early portions of the draft, I, I would guess that um, Trent Bulky would be very high up on that list. So I, I like the fit and another big corner going right behind him. Uh, with Takario Davis from Arizona to the Rams at 19. I like both of those players, and, and big corners are kind of all the rage right now. Man, the cor- the the coverage metrics on Shavon Revel, they're off the charts, man. Yeah. They're not completing anything on this guy. Like all, like almost like low 40% completion percentage. He's uh, getting pass breakups and interceptions left and right. So uh, I think that's, you know, you talk about running backs is tough to tackle. Uh, cornerbacks, it's tough to complete a pass on. That feels like a, a good good way to sum up a, a good player. Yeah. Um, as far as other fits that I like a lot, um, I would probably look at Detroit with Tyler Barron. And I know we're, we're bleeding into stock up and biggest risers here a little bit, but yep. uh, Tyler Barron, formerly of University of Tennessee, transferred uh, another transfer to the University of Miami. Um, that Canes program had an outstanding uh, transfer portal. Um, and, and Tyler Barron, defensively, he's logged at least one sack in each of the first three games for the Canes. All over the field from a pressure perspective, he's one of these guys that has first step explosiveness, but um, some prototypical mass. Uh, I, I think anytime you get guys in the 260s who can move like he does, it it really helps your cause to be an early draft pick just because of the uncoachable elements of the athletic profile mixed with the size. Yeah, I remember Have watching play opposite uh, Aiden Hutchinson in Detroit. That'd be a good fit. I um I watched him at Tennessee a couple of years ago. He, he's I think he's the sixth season or fifth season. Um, so I've been on him for a while, I, and it's almost like the the transfer portal matters. You know, Dabo might want to wake up and see where you can yeah, well, help, your, help your help your football. Probably just keep doing what he's doing. It's the you more know, likely thing that's yeah. going to happen. It's kind of concerning. What else? I mean, dude, I'm I'm looking at this mock draft. I see edge, 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 interior defensive line, man. I'm excited about these defensive linemen. I feel like we're just scratching the surface. Any other, uh, like, what's your favorite fit that you were able to put together here in this latest iteration? Let me look through the top 10. Um, Mason Graham to Minnesota would be fun. Okay, Christian Wilkins, Brian Flores. I see you. Right, yeah, well. <laughs> They 
they don't have a lot of bodies there. They're they just did their new contract for Harrison Phillips, uh, but yeah. the rest of that group is is a lot of questions and uh, what they're able to do with exotic fronts. I think Mason Graham can can make some positive contributions there, but uh, you got Detroit and their offensive line there. You got Green Bay and and they look like they're going to be a dynamic offense and. Uh, I, I think Minnesota having the ability to play some more traditional fronts at times can help Brian Flores have an even bigger menu of how he calls the defense there. So um, I really like that fit for what they do defensively, what Mason Graham has shown, what I think Mason Graham is capable of. And I wouldn't be surprised if you got a few years in, if this pairing did happen and, and Brian Flores is still there and you're like, yeah, where's the sack numbers? But it's, it, the, the value transcends that. And I think Christian Wilkins is the perfect case study. And that is my comp for Mason Graham uh, because then he went to a different scheme and he had nine sacks and then he got $27.5 million a season. So he's a really good player. I, I feel like a new name here is Kevin Winston, uh, safety from Penn State. We have two safeties going in this first round. Uh, Eagles getting him. What, what do we need to know about Kevin Winston? Yeah, so Reed Blankenship, Sidney Brown, I think you're seeing kind of a uh, what touchdowns and scoring and explosive plays and all that's down across the league, right? And you look at the trends of the league and, and why is that the case and, and what teams are doing. And for Philadelphia, Chauncey Garner Johnson's here for a good time. I don't think he's going to be there for a long time. Um, Cindy Brown, you like, but what have you really seen thus far from Cindy Brown? And obviously he's on PUP and we're, we're hoping he gets a chance to come back and be healthy because he's a great player at Illinois. Uh, and then Reed Blankenship is a smart player, uh, but I don't necessarily think that he's not an upgradable player. And then if Reed Blank Blankenship's your third safety, if Cindy Brown hits and is successful, um, that gets really excited. I think Kevin Winston, he's got length. He's a really good tackler. He's got really good instincts as well. Uh, this this Fangio defense is a safety driven defense. Uh, I think it, it, their their boxes generally play at deficient numbers uh, in the run game. And if you're going to do that, having a nickel that can help fit the run and serve as kind of the pseudo seventh man in the box, who's kind of in the box outside the box, the sixth and a half man in the run fit, uh, to be able to have three safeties to do that from time to time, depending on what personnel you're catching, uh, is really critical to fortifying and being foolproof and not being manipulated by opposing offensive personnel groupings. So uh, he's a player who's going to rise. I know some people have him as the top safety he's, Ooh, he's, over he's, Starks. He's, yeah. He's not that wow. for me. He's not that for me, but I Starks going to a place. I really love too. Cause I put him with the jets. Imagine. I didn't, I didn't love that. I didn't love that. On the, that. <laughs> on the back end with the rest of that defense. Right. Um, so I, I think both of those those safety callouts are probably like favorite fits types of qualifiers. But yeah, Winston is a new name. Uh, he was probably among the first ten off the last time I did a mock draft. But um, I think Vic's defense can really benefit from having depth in that room to be able to go big nickel when they want to. They go back to back, uh, Starks and Winston. So mm -hmm. fun little race. I'm excited to get into those players uh, at some point. You know, not tomorrow. What we have Jack Sawyer, Will Johnson, and Isaiah Bond tomorrow. They all go in this first round. So I'm excited though. It's excited Jack Sawyer, Isaiah round. Bond. Who's the third one? Will Johnson, corner. Oh, yeah. That, that'll be an easy one. Well, and we avoided the, the not all Michigan we thought about doing right. all in show. And not even on purpose. Like, oh, right. we could do Loveland. We could do this other defensive tackle. It's like, ah, let's split up, split up the Michigan players. I, I want to proactively declare one of the names for next week. Oh, wow. This is big. Harold Perkins. Okay. Because he's going to be confusing, right? Like he's, he's, it is confusing. And I think it's a very, really fascinating conversation because LSU, um, after a transcendent freshman season, has really struggled to maximize Harold Perkins. I think there's really attractive reps left in his game. But there's times where he's playing in places that I, I don't think puts him in position to be successful. And and there's been some position, I'll say position list players, but he's definitely undersized to play on the edge. And it creates kind of a conflict to project and get comfortable with where does he play best? What is the biggest menu that you can find? Is there a menu that you can find for him as a defensive player that gets him on the field 
for 100% of the snaps or close to 100% of the snaps? Or is this guy just a rotational uh, designated pass rush type player? And if that's the case, um, you compare and contrast the snaps that other guys on the edge play. They get paid a lot of money to rush the passer. And is that an acceptable range for him to get drafted or not? I, I'm having a hard time with it. So I, I want to have the conversation. Okay. So that's you better give me this. Next you better pick this offensive tackle you got going number three over as, uh, overall as well. For uh, Ellen Banks. I got to watch this guy, right? Come on. Yeah, we, we'll watch him. Okay. Uh, and then maybe we'll pick a, a Michigan player for another week. Oh, come back tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll declare yeah, the we'll, third one. Yeah, we'll find out what Michigan player we're doing next week, too. So that's going to do it for us here on Lockdown Fell Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. Uh, as Joe said, the full link with the full mock draft. Uh, over on 33rd team is available for you guys in the show description. We hope you will check it out and I hope you will come back and see us again tomorrow.